Hi, everyone. I'm here on stage with Malganis and Valera. Although, uh, this Malganis should look a little familiar to you guys. Can you tell who it is? Do you want to ruin the surprise? Who's in the costume? I am eternal. He is eternal. He is also Elky. Now, I know you're an accomplished professional gamer. You're an accomplished poker player. I had no idea that you and Jenny here were accomplished cosplayers as well. I mean, I'm not that accomplished, but I really love it. It's like a lot of fun, and it's a, it's a great universe. And especially at the BlizzCon, it's even better because like the reception is awesome. You know, you walk around, and everybody's like, wow, that's so great. That's so cool looking. And like a lot of people who know it's Malganis, right? If you just like do it like in a random place, like in Europe, then you, they will look at you like you're kind of crazy. So it's pretty awesome here, even though I'm crazy anyways. <laughs> well, you guys look fantastic. Can you talk to me about some of the work that went into the costumes, Jenny? I'm sorry? Can you talk to me about some of the work that went into the costumes? Uh, I emailed some people and uh, <laughs> opened the box. Sorry, uh, we didn't make this. Well, you guys look fantastic. Whoever you emailed, I'm going to need that address later. Now, Elki, you've had a chance to hang out on the stage and watch some of these professional matches, and even yesterday participate in your own against Daniel Negreanu. Um, and we talked a little bit about how poker relates to Hearthstone. So can you tell me a little bit about the skills that are involved in both? Uh, yeah, sure, for sure. So like, uh, poker is a game, of course, where there's like variance and you have to rely on luck. But uh, the thing is that you can control luck and you can kind of decide like when you want to rely on it at some part of, part of the game. And Hearthstone is kind of similar, like let's say if you're way ahead and you can play pretty safe and you don't want to take too many risks and you can play around like the main threats of your opponent. So you kind of have to know what can you do next turn. And then like if I'm ahead on board, I don't want to take risks. Like let's say you've like, you don't want to overcommit to the board or things like that. And like in poker, it's kind of the same because you want to calculate your risks. And it's like really, really important in Hearthstone. And you can see those guys like playing at a really like the world class level. And I was like, oh, I wouldn't have done that. But that would probably be a mistake if I had done something else, right? <laughs> well, speaking of calculated risks, walking around BlizzCon and this crowd is pretty tough with those wings and those shoulders. But you guys are rocking it. I'm so happy to have you on the stage. I'm so happy to have all of you joining us in the crowd. We're going to go to a short interview with Kno and we'll be right back.私の名前は佐藤雄一郎で、ID は区の都市で知られています。国籍は日本です。チームは入っていません。ID のプレイヤーがまあ気軽に関われるということはアドバン情報を伝える環境ね。ブリズコンに言ったりというとはまあたまに話をする感じでブリズコンに来るにあたってはリラックスしろとのアドバイスをいただきました。ブリズコン勝
and head into the booth. We are all set to find out who will take it and who will move on to the finals. So casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Rachel, and greetings from the Casters deck. Ready for our second semifinal here at the Hearthstone World Championships for 2015. Who will be playing Oskok in the finals between Hot Form and Kano? My name is Frodan. I'm joined by two legendary gentlemen in Raynad and Hyped. Two very stunning gentlemen as well. How's it going, Raynad? How are you enjoying BlizzCon day number two? I've been loving it, man. I took some 3D photos, got to see a lot of the upcoming Blizzard content, and now I am on the most handsome casting desk of the day. So <laughs> Thank you. Uh, couldn't President. be doing better. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Hyped, uh, you know, you also have to fest me a compliment, so let's go ahead and see what you have to say. Hair looks great. Ah, oh, thanks, As man. always. Thanks, always. You too, buddy. You too, buddy. Well, guys, we're having a lot of fun up here on the desk, but it's time to kind of take off the kitty gloves. These guys are playing for a lot. Uh, it's not just the finals, but there's a serious amount of cash money on the line. If you're able to go from here, it's an additional $35,000 guaranteed because top four is $15,000. In the finals, you're guaranteed 50. And that's, for some of these players, is enough for the entire year's worth of earnings. Absolutely. I mean, the stakes are so high. Both players really, I mean, this, this must be the most important match they've played of their lives. Every match in this tournament has been. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be pretty tense, and uh, hope we see some good games. If you're taking a look at the lineups, or you're taking a look at these two players, uh, do you feel one player is favored or the other hyped? Um, well, I'm just, I'm really hoping for Hot Form to win just because of the Rogue. I want to see the Rogue, a Rogue v. Rogue finals. Um, but the Rogue is going to be kind of his weak point, I feel like. Um, as opposed to no with the weak point of the mid-range Paladin. I'm just focusing on the weak points mostly. Okay, fair enough. Do you agree with that, Raynan? Yeah, I mean, Conquest is a format where a lot of times you can, you know, your two better decks, uh, at least in the matchups, will win. And then that last deck is what kind of loses you the set because it'll struggle to get that last win that you need. Uh, and that's just the, by virtue of the format, that's how it works. And uh, both players definitely have a deck that kind of has weaker matchups, as usual. But re really, it's anyone's game. And uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know who I'd give the edge to, honestly. OK, all right. Well, uh, well, we'll talk about that more in depth in just a few seconds. For now, uh, we're going to get to know Hot Form a little bit better with this quick segment piece as we get ready for our second semifinals. ID の由来は、えー、元は、えー、とまあなんかキャラクターの名前ですけど、まあ、今はノーレッジの頭文字を取ったということにしていますコミュニティが小さいことで、まあ、トッププレイヤーから中堅仮想までのプレイヤーが気軽に関われるということはアドバンテージ情報を伝えるか家族や友達や私がファーストの、まあ、真面目にやってることは知っていてお金が手に入るのでいいんじゃないという感じですね。Two men on the stage, but only one can walk out the victor between Hot Form and Kuno. One from Canada, one from Japan, both regions' last hopes. Of course, you see Canada representing the Americas region, Kuno representing Southeast Asia Pacific, or APAC for short. A lot on the line, again, for, for their regions as well as for themselves. Can't really wait to see how it's going to happen, too, considering that we do have a couple of unique choices as well in the lineups. We do see another rogue player here in the semifinals, a class that's been underestimated, but beloved by one of us, hyped. Uh, rogue is a, is a class after your own heart, but why is it struggling in the eyes of the public, but yet doing well in tournaments? Why do you think that? I think overall it is a little bit weak, but for this particular tournament meta, I think they've uh, found a little niche where it, they can actually get some wins against Priest, for example. That's true, although Priest is the only class that was uh, played by Tice here. Oh, sorry, Tice was the only one playing Priest, and yet he's out of the tournament. So even if you had that advantage going in, we'll see what happens with that road deck eventually. For now, game number one is about to begin. The Druid versus the Warlock. And remember, Kano is playing an all mid-range lineup. He's playing the mid-range Zoo, he's playing the mid-range Paladin, and he's bringing these types of decks to try and overwhelm Hot Form. Yeah, I think a lineup like that is definitely going to create some very interesting close games because, uh, you know, it's not really out of any matchup to begin with. You're always in the game, always have a shot. Uh, pretty good opening hand from No here. Usually when you play Zoo, you're pretty happy to see Druid on the other side of the table. It's usually easy to wrestle early board control away from them and kind of snowball the game into a win. But uh, with the Grand Tournament coming out recently, we did see Darnassus Aspirant get added to most Druid decks, which definitely helps out in the more aggressive matchups like Zoo. 
Yeah, I'm really interested to see if any other additional cards have made it in the way of Hot Form's deck as well, if it'll be uh, helpful, right? If it's a Savage Combatant or even Living Roots, some of these cards have found their ways in Druid List, which would help some of the early game problems with the curve. Absolutely. I mean, that's a great hand. Keeper of the Grove, one of the few cards you want to draw against almost any version of Warlock. Silencing is so valuable against the class because of high impact threats that the aggressive list can, can make, like sure. Rubian Egg or Void Collar, and even the slower Warlock decks have Twilight Drakes, things like that. So uh, he's going to be very happy to see that along with an Innervate. This is kind of the dream as the Druid. When you can turn to Keeper of the Grove, killing a Knife Juggler and a coin effectively from Kuno, that is not what Kuno wants to see at this point. Not at all, considering that this Keeper of the Grove will not only challenge the Knife Juggler number two, but also stay alive. So that Keeper could effectively kill three cards. But uh, there is an alternative play, and that Nerubian Egg will set up so that way when they use Power Overwhelming on it, you still have a challenging 4-4 oh, to it. Yeah, so when uh, the more aggressive versions of Zoo tend to lose board control that early to a Keeper, they kind of struggle to recover for the rest of the game. But in the case of Kuno's deck, it's a lot slower. We see a Dr. Boom in his hand. So he's fine kind of losing the board for a little while, playing the board control game. Yeah, just develop Power Overwhelming here. And I think we're likely going to see him take out that Darnassus Aspirin. Yeah, you want to hit off this Mana Crystal as fast as you can because now all of a sudden Hotform is back on uh, four Mana Crystals. So if you picked up a five Mana Minion, wouldn't be able to play it. Just like that, the Azure Drake appears. We saw what we were talking about. Hotform will spend his turn clearing, though, because again, uh, Zoo hasn't really changed much, even though the speed has definitely decreased. Ultimately, he still builds upon the strength of the board with cards like Defender of Argus. We see a very key juggle coming in there, too. If that, if that juggle went to face, that Keeper of the Grove would still be in play threatening minions right now. So very, very good for Kuno that he hit the minion he wanted to last turn. With the clear board, we have all the four drops uh, locked out. Defender Vargas Implosion, no, neither of them are playable. Pretty big. Yeah, that's huge, again, because then they can't leverage those small minions like Implosion, and then you have to bank off of them being able to kill uh, this Azure Drake. I think we're going to see Kuno take some time to think this turn. This is a really tough play. He just threw that Void Collar. That opens up a new option. He's already seen Keeper of the Grove out of hot form, so he's not going to expect a second one. He's considering Implosion, but that just has so many possible outcomes. If he rolls a two, it's just a very, very weak play. He's going to go for it. It's two out of three chances. Oh. He lands it. He hits a four. There is a swipe on the other end, but killing off the Drake without having to sacrifice his Void Collar, or Void Walker, excuse me, very nice job. And that's going to take Hotform's entire turn. Sure, he has the response, but Kuno has the initiative. Absolutely. Being the first person to develop a minion every turn is just so important in Hearthstone, because as long as you're the first person doing stuff, you're almost always going to win. He doesn't draw a two-drop here, so he's going to have to spend some mana to draw a card. But I think Kuno's going to be pretty happy to just develop a Void Caller and uh, get on board early. Oh, that's a nasty draw. The Doom Guard coming into the hand. That's another candidate that could be pulled by the Void Caller. So as the Druid, how would you, how do you like to play this matchup fight? Um, well, in this situation, getting a Dr. Boom down on this uh, board is really good. Usually, by the time you get to turn 7, you're like really afraid to play Dr. Boom because you're worried about dying. But uh, Hopform got it down pretty much uncontested. He was the first one to play Dr. Boom, which is huge. And with the Savage Roar now, he has a bunch of possibilities. That is true. I was actually counting how much damage he has uh, with the Druid Claw and Savage Roar right now. How much is that? It's 12... Uh, 20 damage, it looks like? Yep, yeah, man. That's the power of Druid. You can just get in there out of nowhere. Does he want to go for it? I think he should, to be honest. Like, he can't die from that life total, even if Kuno does have that Dr. Boom in, in play. I mean, that's 11 damage. He's already seen a power overwhelming. If you just get in there for a lot right now and try to finish the game next turn with Force of Nature, the only thing that could really stop that from Kuno's side is something like a Melganus off a of Void Collar. That's true. Or, um... Defender of Argus to just like stop some of the, the bleeding. Uh, Hopform gonna take it a little bit slow and play the Emperor Thorson and still effectively have combo, but also put more minions onto the board to build up the pressure even more. Oh, well, the Boomba hit for four. Uh, that's even more direct damage, setting up Hopform to potentially be able to kill the next turn. Yep, this is also a very good play. This basically saves the Force of Nature Savage Roar combo, one of the most powerful combos in Hearthstone uh, to develop next turn for Hotform. He, you know, he recognizes that. Might as well just develop an Emperor Thorson and have that combo available for next turn. Try to win the game that way. 
But he do, the Kano has two Defender of Argus's, which over the course of two turns, if he's able to play it out, will set up a lot of walls, maybe to the point where Druid can't even force his way past it. Absolutely. Oh, come on, that was a legendary pun. You missed it right now. All right, awesome. no worries. Cast is uh, for four or five games. We can definitely last it through. Uh, Kuno here, I think a defender play on the Dr. Boom allows him to trade very effectively, but then what's the best sequencing? Because M-Gang boss, you play it, um, you do get to get the Doom Guard forced out, but it's a little bit mana inefficient. It's definitely tough to say. He does get the Doom Guard and play out the Void Collar. It's huge. The taunts are lined up, but is it enough to survive? It is. If Hotform were to combo here, he's looking at getting in eight damage at Kuno's face. And if he does commit to that play, and which he might, to be fair, and just assume Kuno doesn't have another taunt, that could actually win the game for Kuno, essentially. He could set like up that Defender of Argus. Yeah, it looks like we're just going to see him bust through the first half, set up a college Shredder, and hope for a big uh, roar on 10 mana next turn. Yeah, yeah that makes dying, sense. But we'll see what kind of wall Kuno could put up. Well, he's got a decent sized wall. Plus, uh, I don't mind putting my faith in Shredder sometimes to, to get a little lucky. If you can taunt up the, the, uh, the Pilot Shredder with Defender of Argus, maybe another taunt comes out. Yeah, we usually don't see Shredder in Pazoo. This is a lot of four jobs. He has Implosion, two Defender of Arguses, Void Colors, and Shredders. Yeah, that's a really interesting call here. Why do you think he has, like, Pilot Shredder in the Zoo deck hyped? I will leave that up to the Zoo Inventor right now. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Zoo Inventor! Well, what do, what do you think? Right uh, well, Shredder's pretty good, Dan. That's my assessment. Good minion. You, when you have four mana, you want to get it down. That's about it. Uh, this is a card <laughs> I tested a little bit, to be honest. It's not quite as strong as Void Collar. It doesn't get you those free wins sometimes, but it's just such a powerful minion. And, you know, back in the days when, when Zoo played things like Harvest Golem, yeah. you really wanted as many of those as you could get. Well, uh, this is the second Defender of Argus, and uh, by our count, that's not enough to kill your opponent just yet, but what he can do is uh, effectively set him down to 2 HP. Oh, that's, that's a painful minion to come out of the Pilot Shredder, effectively giving it Divine Shield. Mm, succubus, very powerful, but... It Not does... draw or bust, right? Yeah, well, it, the thing is, Ku er, Hotform doesn't have any more burst damage in his hand. He needs to draw something like another yeah. Keeper, uh, a Swipe, just some way to, to end it. You that's know? right. He, by effectively going all face, he set up a race to see who can kill each other the fastest, and he is going to really hope for the next draw to end this game. A taunt would help. Oh! No. Big Game Hunter is not it, and there is 4, 6, 7, and 9, like uh, 12 damage on board, which is <laughs> just enough to kill Druid, How did even this though happen? it hero powers. Hot form was so oh, far boy. ahead, he could have threatened lethal uh, in so many different uh -oh. ways. Uh-oh. And that Game double one. defender of Argus. Yeah, that pulling. double defender of Argus back-to-back -back yeah, locked Hot form out of the game. Just pulls him from the brink of death. What a card. It, and it was exact, too, because you don't know if one of those cases where even if Hot form uh, didn't die the following turn. There was no board space, so you could see that Kuno, even if he was trying to draw for lethal, he might not have the opportunity to play it, giving him another turn to draw into lethal. Every single point of damage that game mattered down to the T. I mean, that, I think we're going to see a lot of close games like that with an yeah. all mid-range lineup. It's going to be a lot of back and forth, a lot of, uh, like, like, the play will really matter. And I feel like most games involving mid-range decks aren't usually a blowout one way or the other. Uh, what do you think of Kuno's lineup, by the way, Hype? It's pretty solid. The Zoo was really good against the Temple Mage, for example, and the Druid. Uh, it would have given Hot Form a chance to win with his Rogue, but he still has a chance in the mid-range Paladin. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's going to be that, weak point. I think that's the wild card in general. Like, how do you, how do you feel mid-range Paladin currently sits in the metagame compared to its very annoying cousin, the Mysterious Challenger Paladin? I have not played much. I know Raynette was a big fan of the Murloc Knight before it came out. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's still it's still definitely a, a card I like a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like mid-range Paladin is a deck that we constantly underestimate just because we see so little of it on ladder that we feel like Challenger might be stronger. But when it comes to tournament play, mid-range Paladin has done incredibly well. It was really popular with the players from South America earlier in the America's Championship. And yeah. uh, every time I've seen it on stage, essentially, in the, next, in the past couple months, it's done very, very well. Even in the Chinese region, a lot of the players that qualified out of China to uh, for the top 16 in, in the Hearthstone World Championship used mid-range Paladin or slower Paladin variants compared to the Secrets Paladin. You could chalk it up to unfamiliarity with the deck. Um, for example, Secrets Paladin was still relatively new, and mid-range Paladin's been around for a while, but 
The fact still stands that a lot of the people in that region seem to like this deck. Absolutely. Hot form playing one of my favorite decks in Hearthstone right now, which is Tempo Mage. Yeah. Very satisfying deck to play. I love that play style. And uh, he's got a pretty solid hand. Mad Scientist is exactly what you want to see in the opening hand. He has the Frostbolt and Stable Portal also. Very powerful cards that are just very flexible. You can use them whenever they fit into your curve. Well, he does draw Mirror Entity and the Mad Scientist. That's something that uh, he'd love that Mirror Entity to be something else. Mana Worm, preferably, is usually what you want to see early game. So this is kind of a, a subtle thing, but having that Zombie Challenge is so important for the Paladin in the opening hand. It's the only one mana play that the Control Paladin deck can have. So when you do draw, you're effectively taking an extra turn. And it's just so, so important for Control Paladin or Midrange Paladin compared to any other class to have that card. Yeah, so much so that Hot Form is using Frostbolt to eliminate that Zombie Chow. Is, is that something desperate enough you think hyped? It's pretty desperate. Not only do you do this with Frostbolt, but Tempo Mage really values that coin for a huge Flame Waker plays. That's true. That Flame Waker, you just bypass two damage that you're able to get benefit from. Or hit a curve earlier, like if you have Dr. Boom, be able to try to get ahead of your opponent's curve and play it before it is, possibly. We're going to see the uh, classic Mad Scientist versus Knife Juggler tension. That Aldor Peacekeeper draw, actually pretty solid for Kuno here. If he doesn't get a muster for battle, he can just play that on curve, keep his Knife Juggler around, and even though that dies to Hot Form's hero power, Hot Form doesn't want to be spending the time and the mana to be killing that on turn three. Yeah, that's right. Not only is it uh, inefficient onto the board, but he floats a mana that way. And this will definitely put it uncomfortable for Hot Form. Again, he wished he had a coin, potentially, for things like the Flame Waker. But now he's going to have to wait for more spells and, and more mana crystals to use it. Yeah. So now Hot Form is at a bit of a crossroads. He's, he did get a Mirror Entity off of the Mad Scientist, right. so he can't spend this turn developing the one from hand. So he is going to choose the Hero Power. Monster for Battle, just one turn too late, but still a very good draw. We do know that is Mirror Entity, like you said, because it was unable to play. But I believe he only plays two Mirror Entities and nothing else. And Kuno should uh, understand this about Hot Form's deck, having full information. And if you know that there's no counter spell and it's only Mirror Entity, that allows you to play optimally from this point. Now Kuno decides, I'm going to give Hot Form the Shredder. And Mad Science is showing why it's one of the most powerful two drops oh, in the game here. That's awkward. <laughs> the Mana Wraith. Well, I mean, I guess he still has the opportunity to Evaluate some of the plays. Let's steal portal first. Ooh, no Azure Drake just yet. Huh. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's a that's a screw jank clunker. It looked like Does a he black technician. I don't second. think so. There's Shredder, and I think that's yeah. about it. But I don't know if Hot Form is playing Shredder. Oh, and the Boombots. Yes, the, the Boombots. Boom oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, playing the screw clank junker for tempo. It looks like a quartermaster. If that is Silverhand or Kush, just feels like something's missing. Pretty clean answer to the 2-5, and he gets to leave the Man Wraith on, on board for Hot Form's turn. Just continue to be annoying. It's true, but you can always just trade the 2-2 two -two into the, the Shredder itself, and then use Flame Waker to go crazy. But he doesn't have any 2-mana spells or, or lower. Imagine if you had the coin, he could do Coin Mirror Entity, for example, get the 4 pings. Yeah, that would be nuts. Uh, but yeah, Flame Waker, this is exactly... Probably the most important card in Hot Form's deck, I would say, against almost any version of Paladin. One thing that Paladin decks can consistently do is develop a lot of soldiers, uh, or just one ones in general, through things like Haunted Creeper. And it's very tough to clear those out with things like your Hero Power and Frost Bolts. You really need to draw Flame Waker at some point, and usually two of them, to snowball the game against Paladin as a Tempo Mage. Yeah, in fact, um, it's, it's pretty much your key to survival because. Uh, unless you're running Flame Strike, you're just going to lose the board, and you need to use the board and leverage whatever minions you have, so that way cards like Fireball and Antonite can become lethal damage as opposed to cleaning up opponent's minions. Hot Form choosing to leave the high power minion alive on Kuno's side of the table because he wants there to be as many targets as possible for his Flame Waker triggers, for his hero power. He is going to take a bit of extra damage for this choice, but he doesn't have to deal with the two drop that's coming out of Pilot Shredder. Not, not yet, at least. Lothab will lock out some of these uh, spells. Now Shredder gets form. to get some value before getting pinged off. That's huge. There's nothing more satisfying than trading off a 4-1 Shredder. Yeah. Pretty effectively, too. Although Hot Form does pick up Water Elemental. That's something pretty powerful to do, too, this turn. And Kuno will just respond by playing what many consider to be the strongest legendary in the game. Has his throne? Has he been dethroned yet? You think, or is it still Doctor Boom number one? 
Is he the first round draft pick? Mr. Challenger is a legendary, so yeah. <laughs> so good, we had to put him in twice. I'm on Team Gormok. Team Gormok? Well, on this board, it'd be pretty good still, right? You have five minions on board? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, Hot Form draws Mirror Image, so that is some synergy with the Flame Wakers. But uh, it's also one of those things about Boom Bots. I'm always really scared about those things. Yeah, Paladin is actually... Uh, if Hot Form here can clear the Boom Bots, without losing his taunts, it's actually very in inefficient for Kuno to punch through those. So if he could develop two Flame Wakers, a Mirror Image, and then have them kind of survive, soak up about nine damage from Kuno's side, yeah, uh, he could easily start stabilizing the board again and trying to catch up. But yeah, the first person that plays Dr. Boom just consistently having such a huge edge. It's just, it is such a powerful minion like you mentioned. And yeah, I mean, getting it down first makes it so tough to win. Hot Form would love to develop his own here, but if he does, he would might just die. Yeah, there's a lot of board tension on the other side just because you don't know if Paladin can be aggressive. And sure, it doesn't have burst, but if it has, you know, 14 damage on the board, you're gonna be in trouble if you can't stop it. What is he going to attack with the Water Elemental? He's picking a favorable trade. And, well, there hypothetically is lethal if uh, things worked out optimally by the Boombots hitting phase. Yeah, so Kuno's going to start doing some math. He recognizes that he can deal about 18 damage this turn. Guaranteed. Stay from double fireball. Guaranteed. Counter kill, as long as the Boombots don't hit, hit him as well. Mm. Yeah, that is that possibility, too. You know, how much do I play board versus going aggressive? because my opponent might also have a very strong lethal possibility as well. This is something that you have to consider because Kuno's like, well, you played Dr. Boom very aggressively. Maybe you have a way to kill me. It's actually these Dr. Boom versus Dr. Boom board states where something like Aldor Peacekeeper is so powerful. It's always a tough call to know whether to go face or trade off with your Dr. Boom. Oh, oh I love this play. This is so creative. Essentially, the Elder Peacekeeper play. Yep. Yeah, so by silencing his own Dr. Boom, he negates the effect of equality and restores a 7 7 on the board. And he's getting the face damage. Yeah, Kuno showing why he is in the semifinals of the Hearthstone World Championships here. And uh, yeah, she's going to take a turn to develop a Shredder. Has huge initiative on the board now. And things are not looking good for Hot for him. No, sir, because even the Fireball. Oh. He's gotten some fireworks. Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to see some fireworks. Here we go. Fourth of July came early for all of you American fans. We're going to see a lot of explosions in just a second. And of course, he can also snipe this pilot shredder to reduce the power on board. What? Oh, Is he going to actually kill this boob? Wow. It could happen. No way! And that means that Kuno can't get through both Mirror Entities and start attacking the face this turn. And both these Flame Wakers will survive. <laughs> that is brutal. So Kuno at this point, he has to make a decision. If he plays True Silver and Muster, he's going to lose one of his weapons without getting full value out of it. He's thinking, okay, should I play Muster for battle and just hold off on the True Silver? Maybe attack with my Light's Justice, set one of those taunts to one health and try to finish it with a token next turn? Or do you just develop True Silver now knock out a taunt and be more aggressive with it. Yeah, and be more respectful to the mana as well because you might not have the opportunity to play True Silver on the following turn. If you draw a, like, you know, a, a Tyrion, for example, you can't really utilize the True Silver Champion next turn. So he goes ahead and kills every single mirror entity, but with two Flame Wakers on board, I'm not sure what to expect, Greenhead. What would you fireball here? Maybe you hero power the Shredder. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Maybe you don't even have to, but uh, fireball uh, face. We'll see. Fireball the nice. face. And with a well, Zepomatic most likely won't survive. I'm wow, that is conservative. Yeah. He had the option of killing Zapomatic there, the Flame Waker, and setting it to one health, but he's being really protective of them. Doesn't want to get blown out by something like Consecrate. That's right. So Hot Form begins the victory march for the Americas. Just a couple more turns. All right, so if we see something like an old Murkai, this could help get Kuno back into the game, but he needs to get a fantastic Murloc here. Yeah, not one of those two ones. Uh, uh, brutal. Well, yeah, that's definitely not a two one, one of the weakest ones. And uh, a simple spell damage draw might be able to end the game. Might be able to end the game. <laughs> if he hits all face. Oh, man.
Well, it's still really powerful, and you can kill off this Murloc Knight. You know, to, to hop for him, there's really no rush. Uh, his opponent is still left top deck, and the only problem is if he hits into a Tyrion and can't get past it. Yeah, so something like a Consecration here would be... Oh! oh my goodness! That Consecration was a huge draw! And now that's a, a full board clear. So now Kuno has a tough choice. He really needs to kill this Flame Waker, but he doesn't want to. Hotform's already down to six. He wants to just go face. That's right. But he's back in the game, and now it's on to Hotform to draw a threat. And he has drawn a string of spells, so it's likely. Threat would be Antonitis or something equivalent. Azure Drake oh. is still really big. That's actually one of the best draws in his deck. Certainly. And now Mana Worm comes into hand, which, again, every small little point of damage really does matter. How is Kuno going to wiggle out this one? He needs his Tyrion. No, Big Game Hunter is drawing short, and that will mean game two goes to hot form as he cannot stop the aggression. We have ourselves a tied series. What a game. Tempo Mage delivers every single time. That deck is full of shenaniganry. Flame Waker, man. Turns out it's pretty good against Monster for battle. That was intense. We saw uh, Kano pull back a lot and play very conservative with his Paladin Shredders, for example. He was always running his Paladin Shredder, at, say, into the Lothab, and then also the turn before he's doing trades with it. Uh, really not caring about face damage and maybe hurting him at the end. Yeah, that's right. It could have been um, maybe that extra little push, because you did notice that at one point he had an option to attack with a true silver champion for four damage and put his opponent to two. But imagine if that scenario where he did two extra damage somewhere and was able to use that true silver to hit face. These are the small decisions that end up becoming the difference between winning and losing in these close matches. Absolutely. You can't, you can't even consider like him playing more conservatively as a misplay even. What he did... You can't really anticipate the way that Hotform played that. He played Dr. Boom into, into Kuno's Dr. Boom. Right. Giving Kuno Boom initiative, I guess is what I would call it. <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, it just put him in a position where he could be aggressive and made him regret not getting that damage in. But definitely a, a, a tough thing to expect, I think. And both players played that fantastically. Was that a key loss in any capacity for Kuno? Did he need that mid-range pound to win that matchup? Or do we expect this and, you know, no, no harm, no foul, really? What do you think? Uh, I think it tends to favor Tempo Mage, personally. Yeah, I would say the Hotform's Tempo Mage, getting a win, not that important. Similar to Nose, Warlock getting a win. We expected both these uh, to get the green check mark pretty soon. And uh, we, the mid-range Paladin is really going to try to steal a win from the Druid. It's been a traditionally somewhat okay matchup. Well, okay matchup indeed, but you need it to be the best you can be. As I believe these players are really close to getting to their goal of the World Championship Finals. Game three is underway. We have Rogue versus the Druid. That Rogue being one of the huge wild cards in this tournament. How far can these Rogue players go? And one of them's waiting in the final. The other is two games away from joining him. Yeah, I mean, this is a matchup that's uh, hyped. You would know better than me. I usually play this from the Druid side. Do you feel like it's favored for rogues? What are the cards that are important? You're asking a rogue player what he thinks yeah. about a matchup? Yeah, okay. well, no, let, let me guess. <laughs> Is it rogue favorite hyped? It's slowly gone into the Druid's favor. Ah, uh, okay. It's okay. slowly deteriorated over time. <laughs> Thanks to things like the Darnassus Aspen, yeah. for example, compared to the Cut Purse. If the Cut Purse had three HP, maybe it'd sure. be an even matchup still. But um, it's gone in the Druid's favor over time. The big game hunter is not going to help the Druid, though. But this opening hand for the Druid is actually really bad. This is not what you want at all versus a rogue. All you want is a few creatures. Yeah, the stickier creatures, the better. The Pilot Shredders, very difficult to deal with. Um, Drew the Claw, just, just enough health to be annoying for Rogue. Uh, that These kinds of cards are the ones that give him a lot of problems. And then Rogue has to use its own health to trade off board position because you're naturally equipping weapons and trying to clear the board that way. And then, of course, Drew would use his Force of Nature Savage War to end it. It's a very solid hand for hot form though. That deadly poison got a lot better after the grand tournament came out just because it kills more things from the druid deck. It's a very important card to kill things like that aspirin, to kill things like piloted shredder. So he's gonna be happy to see that. And he has a nice curve of hero power into deadly poison SI into Azure Drake. Yeah, it's a good point. And Rogue really needs that early game board presence to make sure that they can continue to seize tempo. One of the best cards, one of my favorite cards in the game is Sap from Rogue. And it gives you so much tempo where you're only using two minion, two mana to remove their minion. But the problem is if you have no board, sometimes Sap doesn't do anything. So this is where Rogue doesn't feel, you know, uncomfortable dropping this big game hunter because he's just trying to get minion presence ahead of his opponent. You see a solid turn four, Deadly Poison SI to kill, potentially kill whatever drops out of the Shredder. Um, no, might save the coin though with all those seven drops. 
and then we do have a nice turn five with the Azure Drake. Yeah, Kuno is definitely not happy about seeing most of his seven mana cards in his opening hand. Those are usually the most expensive cards in Druid decks. You definitely want to draw those later, but that Innervate's definitely going to help get some of those out, and I think we're going to see him save those just for that. Wow, Savage Roar defensively, just to remove it. He knows this Big Game Hunter will do too much damage if he just ignores it or tries to play his own Big Game Hunter, which might get tempoed out. I mean, it's actually an excellent play. That Savage Roar is unlikely to see value for a very long time, and it's very dangerous to let Rogue stick any minions because if they just have one creature in play, they're going to kill all your stuff or sap all of it, and as they're doing that, you're taking a ton of damage in the process. With the BJ right, well. down, he's pretty confident. Drop his Octoboom, which will get sapped. We still have the Boom Bots, and then we have the Ancient of War that we know won't get sapped later, which is huge for Druid. Yeah. This board state, by the way, the Pilot Shredder and Dr. Boom, are two of the main culprits of why you might see Rogue not succeeding as much these days because of how powerful and sticky they are. And yet, ironically, Hotform's able to deal with it uh, pretty flawlessly considering that he had a board preemptive to the Dr. Boom. Depends on how these Boombots react, though. I mean, he does manage to deal with it without using Sap, but it cost him 10 damage. That's yeah. important. But he's a little bit less concerned about taking damage because he has seen a Savage Roar come out already. It's not like Kuno has developed too strong of a board, so he feels like, you know, I can take some damage here, use this sap on a minion that gets a little bit less value when it's replayed. That's right. So that Shadow Boxer that came out of the Shredder is relatively useless to the Rogue. Um, the only exception, of course, being a Farseer. You don't really have much healing in Rogue these days. A lot of them have even cut a heal bot because they feel like it's, you know, the Farseers are just better for early game tempo compared to having that, far, um, that heal bot which comes much later. So Hotform picked up the Tinker Sharp Sword Oil. That's one of the keys to be able to win this game and flip. It's it's almost Rogue's version of the Force Nature Savage Roar in some capacities. All right, interesting. So Hotform's going to choose not to sap that Shredder. Mm -hmm. He's going to clear the board standard way. All right, he's happy to see that Boombot outcome. And yeah, it's a great turn to develop Drake. Rogue is definitely a deck that's capable of flipping that switch and going in the offensive very quickly. Right. So if Kuno can just... Essentially, if Hotform can keep this initiative for one or two more turns, that 27-point that life total from, uh, from Kuno won't be nearly as impressive. It'll, it'll evaporate in almost one turn thanks to cards like Blade Flurry, um, just because you get to double-dip your damage with the weapon immediately. Deadly Poison and Sharp Foot Oil, that's 12 damage. And you just combine that with the buff on the minion, like a Salsi deck can. <laughs> it goes Five, down really quick. 17. But with, uh, with no threats, uh, Kano's going to be able to freely just drop the Ancient of War over and over. He doesn't even care if Hotform has the second sap, for example. Yeah, this is fantastic for Kuno. This is exactly what he needed. Hotform did have one of the issues with the Rogue deck that you see once in a while, which is you just draw a hand of all spells, and it's tough to develop a threat. So he has to play this Salsi, not the most impressive minion, but that oil is definitely going to buff it up. But it put a lot of pressure onto Kuno, and that's not a minion that he wants to hero power. Not at all. You don't want to take that additional damage. Uh, and usually Swipe is one of your best answers to cards like Violet Teacher, which you know Hotform is running to. But in this case, I think your best chance is to push with as much damage as possible. Rogue traded so much of his life. Is that 9 HP? Absolutely. That Ancient of Lore is very threatening. Being able to draw Kuno into a lot of cards that just end the game, like Force of Nature, uh, the combo, he draws a second Savager as well. He has oh. an option just heal and outlast. He's, he's pretty confident that Hotform doesn't have a uh, sprint based on the fact that he's opened uh, his turn eight with mana knives. He does have it now, so it's actually, it might bait um, you know, into thinking he can heal himself. All right, well, Hotform uh, trying to cross the finish line some way, but Kuno is the one who's going to have big walls after big walls. And he also has heals to back it up, too. And both players very low on life, but Hotform just needing to eviscerate that 4 1 big game hunter. Just so he's not dead to any four damage card, like Drew to the Claw, for example. That's right. With now, the um, down, all you really have to worry about is maybe a Sap Flurry. That's all he's really worried about with, the, say, an Ancient of War, which I think is just a stronger play than the Ancient of Lore, for example, right now. Okay. I, I definitely see that, yeah. If you're playing Ancient of War, I think you definitely expect it to get sapped for the first one. And then playing it the second time, you're hoping it kind of locks the rogue out of the game. But Hot Form has. set up lethal, too, with all of the little guys. That's nine damage. Uh, that's with, true. With um, the power. Of course, like you said, the flurry is a, is a big threat as well. He has not seen a single blade flurry from Hot Farm. It's a it's a card that you tend to see two of in these types of rogue lists. So he's gonna go with the lore heal. Interesting. Okay. Uh, usually, when you see a rogue with very little cards, you're pretty confident you could just run them out of cards. 
gonna get tricked by this man <laughs> a little bit. Well, Hopform did pick up the Blade Flurry, so that's really useful if uh, Kuno end up going for the Board Flood option. And now he's in a tough position once again. Sapping this is not what he exactly wants to use, and that's gonna make Ancient of War much stronger. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what Kuno was hedging against. If, I, if he played Ancient of War, he wouldn't have gotten any value out of his 7-drop. But in this case, he knows, I'll play Lore, I'll heal. Even if he has the Sap, he's not going to get too much value out of it. Will we see a charge here? It Pretty definitely, tempting. Yeah, it definitely with, has some merit. Yeah, with Savage War down, he still has... Does he use both swipes or just one swipe? Both, I think. He used both, both swipes, swipes okay. as well. Mm -hmm. So he's looking for a Force of Nature or the second Druid of the Claw to finish the game. Yeah, and there's not too many cards left in the Druid's deck. He knows that he can... If he can find a turn to develop Ancient of Lore, he's likely to draw into those, but he definitely wants to be mana efficient this turn. This is not the turn for Ancient of Lore. Most likely, if he's going for the Druid of the Claw Shredder play, there is some merit to Lore because you still are left with enough mana to play Dronassus Aspirant. So definitely a lot of options for Kuno here. Uh, no clear-cut best play. And these are the kinds of turns that well, just decide who makes World Championship Finals, honestly. That's right. So it's a really important one, uh, one that you can understand why Kuno ropes. He's going over the Ancient of Lore as if he wants to play it again. This time, may just draw cards if he feels comfortable enough. He's gonna heal once more, he's so defensive. Taking the rug is a perfectly viable plan. We will see the potential Lotheb Flurry turn to set up a huge board and clear the opponent's board, and the second sap, that's huge. That means yeah. he's gonna be able to get through the Ancient of War. That play was really defensive, and Rogue finally might be in a spot where he can turn the tides very convincingly, because he's going to have minion stick on the board, and he's going to have another oil come down. And this is absolutely huge for Hotform. He knows that he's not in danger of getting hit by anything like Force of Nature. He's developing such a massive board, killing all of Kuno's minions. And I don't know how Druid's going to flip this. This is just one of the weaknesses of the class. Once you're behind, it's really tough to flip these board states. You need these minions that can just dominate the board on their own, like Ancient of War. But that second sap from Hot Farm is going to put an end to that. Yeah, no matter what minion he puts out, it's uh, going to get pushed past. And with the oil, that's going to be an additional 6 plus 15. the 6. 8 on board, that's right 14 damage. 15. 15 damage. 15 total damage. So uh, he has two eviscerates left as well. Right. And an SI7. Well, he knows uh, one so of there, there, are, there are some direct damage sources he can get. Okay, well, uh, what does Hotform have here? So we know about the sap in Hotform's hand, but Kuno doesn't. He's going to go in on the Ancient of War and get punished. That, that is a card that you can't... The, playing around the second copy of something is usually a tough call to make. Um, unless you're very far ahead, it's usually not right to. So this is definitely a correct play from Kuno, I think. This is an aggressive play. Let's develop Ancient of War. Try to win the game with it. It's a great board for it if Hotform doesn't have the sap. Well, if, if, even if he does sap, though, it is the second sap, which would make the Ancient of War stick much heavier. And that Blade Flurry allows him to get some additional damage in after this turn. So uh, this could be the beginning of the end of game three. But is there, is there a draw for Kuno to win the game right now? I don't believe so. There was nothing that could deal quite enough damage here. Savannah's is too slow. I think we're going to see a hero power on that SI7 agent. And this backstab oil flurry turn from hot form it's going to end the game. End it. Yeah, that's right. It should be enough damage because then the backstab will activate the sharp sword oil, giving him enough to be able to clear it. Yeah, Rogue. Rogue putting on things, man. It's really powerful. I guess, is, is it dependent on where the oil lands at all? Or I think it's fine either way. It's fine. You get the spell power. Just yeah, it's, it down. that's right. The spell power allows it to clear it anyways. And uh, that's going to be another win for the Rogue of all classes to surprise people in the World Championships. This one's been the most shocking in my opinion. Yeah, it performs reasonably well against Druid. Definitely a winnable matchup, especially against slow cards like Ancient of War. They just don't perform that well against things like like Druid, really. Or like, like Rogue, excuse me. So, Hype, uh, do you think it's Rogue favored at all, by any chance, after um, watching that? Yeah, if there's no wild growth involved, then it's a fair match. <laughs> that's right. You, that's a, such a good point. In fact, if one of those early game cards is wild growth, then hitting those seven drops with the Innervate and the coin would have been much easier to hit, and the pressure would have been one turn sooner I mean, he could have gotten those damage points in, would have been a different game, for sure. Absolutely. Using that Savage Roar early also made him not really have the option to draw into Force of Nature. So it made him play Ancient of Lore to heal instead of draw, which definitely a reasonable line of play, but maybe, uh, maybe he regrets using that Savage Roar on turn three a little bit too. 
That's right. Well, uh, here we go into the final couple of games here. We were talking about Hot Form's Druid being targeted potentially uh, as Kuno's key to victory, but I'm not sure uh, how, how viable that is considering Druid is still a class that can defeat almost anything. And Hot Form even has cards like Harrison Jones in his Druid deck, which can be very effective against Paladin. That's a very good point. I mean, it, it gives the deck a way to answer a Tyrion without a Keeper of the Grove. Normally, Tyrion is one of the most powerful cards in the Paladin versus Druid matchup, for example. Even if you silence it and, and don't have to worry about the weapon, that 6-6 minion is just so many stats for a deck without removal to deal with. But if you do have the Harrison, you can set up the, uh, just the best answer to Ashbringer that there is, really. Yeah, that's right. Although, I think another thing to consider is that it does make the Druid Mirror better for Kuno, because Harrison Jones, uh, that's not going to land on anything, right, Hyped in the Druid Mirror? Not at all. Also, the uh, Kuno has the Ancient of Wars. Do we know if Hotform plays those as well? It's a huge advantage in the Mirror. Uh, that's, that's a good point. Um, you know, we've seen so many Druid decks. In fact, 12 out of 16 players here at BlizzCon, out of the 16 finalists, brought Druid. The most popular class by a landslide, in contrast with Rogue, which was brought only twice by Oskaka, one of the finalists in hot form. So uh, it's a very interesting thing to see the differences between Druid decks, like who chooses to go for more of that weapon hate or more of that aggro hate. All of it is up for grabs. We've even seen an aggro Druid brought to the top 16, ones with like Leopard Gnomes. Your favorite yeah. deck, Reyna. <laughs> Leopard Gnome is definitely one of my favorite cards. <laughs> I believe you use it to climb to rank two the other day. Yep, in fun and interactive fashion. It's, uh, uh, it's a good time. Yeah, good times. That's a... That's definitely something that uh, is continuing to evolve as well. Anticipate it with the League of Explorers. That's pretty hype. Did you get to see the announcement at all about that? I did not get to see too much of it. I just saw the cool card, the, the Discover card on turn two. That seems really cool. I like the options of you get to pick three cards. Mm -hmm. It's like tracking for everybody. Are you, are you a fan of any specific uh, rogue or mage cards? I have not gotten to look at the rogue or mage cards yet. Okay. For those of you who don't know, Hyped is uh, a dedicated mage and rogue player. Uh, almost to a fault sometimes, people say that. Maybe you love this class a little too much. Is that true? Is there any, is there any truth to that rumor? Uh, probably comes a little bit from uh, my WoW days where you, you do just play one class and that's like your identity. Well, you really enjoy just playing the one class rather than swapping around. Not as the case in Hearthstone. You have to be good with a lot of decks. Druid versus Paladin is game four. Hot form is one step away from going to the finals versus Oskaka and setting up an all-Western finals. Can Kuno, the last standing member from the Asian region, put a stop to that. With, with that kind of curve, though, he's going he's gonna to need to go fishing. Oh, yeah. Kuno's going to want to see something like Zombie Chow here, maybe a Knife Juggler, a Mini Bot. He needs to draw more early game so that his hand just has more options. He can't be hero powering on turn two, doing nothing on turn one against Druid. The deck is just too fast, and it'll punish slow draws like that. It's one of those things that you were mentioning as well. You know, Tyrion is a great card, and it is pretty effective, but will even be relevant by that, by that time it even comes down as soon as you can. Um, that said, Paladin is one of the best at curving out really po like in a really strong fashion. You have the shielded mini bot, you have the muster for battle. Even if you can combine that with quartermaster, those things are really hard for Drew to recover from. So there's always that possibility of drawing the right thing at the right time. Absolutely. I mean, if you do draw those cards at the right time, like that, <laughs> that's such a huge pickup. But yeah, as you were saying, when you do draw these things, Paladin is the class that has the most powerful curve every turn. <laughs> In theory, is Pilot of Shredder a good creature for turn four? Dan? Probably the best, right? Probably Dan. the best. Probably right. the best. That's a good curve, then. You were right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it is good, and he's just missing something on turn five to be able to completely overwhelm Druid with even cards like Sylvanas Windrunner, which is really problematic for Druid to do with. For the same reasons you mentioned, even if you silence wow. it, you're in a good spot. The, the, the two, three, three four, five, six coming out from Kuno. What and a draw. Most likely, over the next four turns, he can draw something to do on turn seven. This is one of the strongest starts you can have in the entire game. I'm, I'm seeing a Dr. Boom in Kuno's future. I feel it. <laughs> Somewhere between the next uh, three draws, you say? Yeah. All right. Well, Hopform does have an answer to Muster. It is one of the most frustrating early game cards to deal with, but Swipe conveniently deals with it perfectly um, for maybe the next turn if he wants to develop a minion this turn. Yep, Hot Forum is debating, should I just play Shade and Axe Ramus this turn? He knows that Kuno isn't threatening a Quartermaster on turn four. He knows that if I swipe next turn, I don't have to commit my coin to it. But if he were to swipe now, he can follow up with a Piloted Shredder as well. So both plays definitely having merit, and he's just weighing his options at this point. Yeah, there is merit to, again, what you're saying. Do I save the coin and take this damage willingly from Paladin? Versus if I'm going to swipe anyways, I just want to minimize that damage. Not to mention that uh, Paladin does have a way to answer this 
uh, the shade of next. I mean, sometimes if they have no other play, they just consecrate and kill it off. So uh, on ladder heights, how often do you play against mid-range paladin? Are you familiar with it from the druid side at least? Never, no, almost never. Uh, but I was interested. In, Hotform is a much more experienced druid player than I, and I was interested in uh, seeing him keep the swipe without any form of mana ramp. Mm -hmm. So guess one of the key. scenario. But he did not get any sort of wild growth or dynasis from his other three cards. So he might get punished for them. That's true that, true that. I definitely like his choice of keeping the swipe. There are definitely hands, like the one Kuno had here, that can kind of run you over. And That's compared to something like a Mysterious Challenger Paladin, the Control Paladin's soldiers are actually much more threatening because this deck tends to play Quartermaster, whereas other versions of Paladin don't. So that makes you want to keep cards like Swipe a little bit more. And Kuno even opting to play Harrison Jones because this is the best that he'll ever be on turn five. You know Druid probably won't have an opportunity to play that weapon. And so he's just going for as much board presence as possible. Yeah, he's already seen a swipe come down, so as good as that would be against his board, he's not going to expect the second one. And yeah, Hotform doesn't have it. Harrison Jones going to get to send something to the museum, probably this piloted shredder. I have no time Do you think there's a world where he just goes really aggressive? I mean, he put him down to yeah, 9 HP. That, yeah, it's... That, that's a really dangerous critical amount of health, especially because there's also a Sylvanas. Oh, well, that's not really a target that you care about being stolen. Now, now that is one owl. He runs the one owl. That's true. Oh, yeah, the, the owl might be a way for him to activate it. But other than that, Ancient Watcher, it's a lot of stats, but you can't activate it easily. Oh, Dan. Who won the bet? <laughs> well, it's about time you won something, Raina. Oh. Well, a Dr. Boom here is probably the <laughs> best case in this <laughs> Please don't fire me. I, no, I swear okay. I can change. No, it's okay. <laughs> He's got one of the best answers in swiping Dr. Boom. Uh, or, or just BGH2. Um, sorry, not, not swipe and doctor, swipe and beat Big Game Hunter. That's usually one of the best things that you can do to answer the boom bots. Uh, but he's taking his time. Absolutely. Think about Tyrion too, though. E even though it's a card with Taunt and Divine Shield, it looks very defensive. It's actually just a very aggressive minion in a defensive deck. Like, dropping Tyrion puts your opponent uh, in a position where they know they're taking effectively a fireball worth of damage every single turn, almost no matter what. So, even though he is playing the control deck, at this point, a lay on hands is going to be looking for more aggressive cards, things like equality consecrates to, to just help push damage through, basically. That's right. And this is the power of the early game curve, like you were mentioning. The fact is, he can keep up this tempo and not even be afraid too much of resources because he's so close to threatening Druid. And there's always that possibility of even that boom bot being the game deciding damage. Absolutely. So as the as the Druid here, Hotform is deciding, <clears throat> trying to figure out really, how do I deal with this Tyrion? He doesn't have a Keeper of the Grove, but even if he did, I mean, that Tyrion is just, the stats alone are a huge problem. He's got some plays with Swipe to help to take out the Divine Shield, the Boom Bot. He can try to go through it the hard way. Is yeah. there any merit in Savage Roaring and just face tanking six damage and hoping for the best? Oh, no. The Boom Bot just to dodging the face, that, that would be some really ambitious line of play from Hot Form, but it could be his best to win because he does have two Savage Roars. That Boom Bot does not end up hitting the, the face, so he does have that room to play with. All right, well. That Druid of the Claw taking damage is not something Hotform wanted to see. I think he actually would have preferred to take that hit in the face, even though his life is so low. The issue here is he's going to lose his only taunt minion. He does have he does have one more in hand, which is a big deal. Oh, that interesting. Owl, though. I'm trying to actually see if there was uh, something interesting about like silencing the Ancient Watcher now and attacking. No, no. But yeah, for viewers at home, this is an interaction that comes up. Pretty rarely, but it's strong when it does. Ancient Watcher ha says he can't attack. When you end up drawing something like a silence effect, it becomes a very efficient minion and just start delivering the beatdown. That's Kuno, right. Kuno knows this, but he's going to, to hold on to the Owl and kind of use it for some surprise burst damage. He knows that even if he swung this turn, it wouldn't be lethal, and he's just trying to set up the strongest push for next turn. That's right. This is his best defense also against Force of Nature, Savage Roar, which would be the follow-up. And, I mean, Hotform did have half of that as well. What, what is Druid even trying to draw here at this point? He needs a Harrison. Oh, There's the Harrison. Oh. Harrison. That keeps him alive. Or so he thinks. 
The fact is, he can still silence the minion here and push. So the Harrison was the right draw, but will Hawthorne or will Cano see this opportunity to lethal? I'm pretty sure he will. Oh, he, he's made some very clever Iron Beak plays in this match already. He knows. There it is. All right. Very patient, Ancient Watcher. We have ourselves a tied series going into game number five to determine who is going to the finals. Most Ancient Watchers are, are pretty patient, Hype. They're not known for their, their activity. They're known for their, their spectating capabilities. They're okay. disciplined. They, they watch. Really. Their character. This is their character, yeah. Right. yeah. We, we all could learn a little bit from Ancient Watchers. <laughs> Maybe you more than others, though. Game number five uh, between these two guys will be a Druid Mirror. This is always one of those matchups where you're very scared to enter in if you, come, if you feel like you're a little bit unlucky because you definitely want to be able to get that early game ramp. Uh, however, you know, some of those def deck differences, like that Harrison Jones, even though it did make a small impact but not meaningful one for Hot Wars game, that might be the key that can ultimately help No get the advantage with the Ancient of Wars, etc., like you were mentioning, Hyped. Uh, now the players bring it to game five. Both of them very tense, I'm sure. It's a very important match. The winner of this advances into the finals of the Hearthstone World Championship. And this is a match, I, I win or lose, they're both going to remember this for a very long time. That's right. It's the farthest that any of them have ever gotten. And this is the biggest stage. There's thousands of people here watching. A big shout out to the crowd. You guys have been awesome so far. Hope you guys are enjoying these wonderful set of games. Game number five determined who goes on to face Oskaka. And that semifinal was also ridiculous. It was so close between Tice and Oskaka. I wouldn't want it any other way. Both semifinals going the distance. Absolutely. Right. All right. Okay. So. Key cards in this matchup are going to be the ramp spells. Kuno has three of those right off the bat. Ancient of War, though, Hype, you're mentioning that's important in the Druid matchup. Can you tell us why? It is, if Hotform can get there. It's a lot of value. Um, you don't really want to crush your units into it. You can silence it with Keeper, but that usually only protects you for so long because it's still a great minion. It still trades, and the, putting a 2-4 on the board isn't that strong of a turn either. Yeah, gen generally, you want to just play the strongest minion possible and force your opponent to react to it and what oftentimes you see in this mirror is one, the person who's able to play uh, minions more aggressively can attack the hero portrait of their opponent, and then the other Druid player has to trade every single time, and then you're just losing too much on the damage race. So you can see Kuno considering keeping the Shredder as well. Even though he has so much ramp, he's not looking for expensive cards. And the reason is he's considering playing turn one double Aspirant, and if there's no Wrath from Hotform's side, he can just play turn two Shredder. He's out of cards, but he would be oh, very crazy. far ahead on board. Yeah. And to be honest, for a very long time, that's like the best type of opening you can hope for in a Druid Mirror. Whoever has the more aggressive draw tends to be very favored, and he does keep it. I think he's going to go for it. To ramp him straight to, well, straight up to five. Yeah, so he could also just draw five draw. Awful. Ooh. So now he has to completely re reevaluate the math on how do I want my ramp to pan out? How, what order do I want to play things in? I think he's still going to commit to the double Aspirant or the Shredder. Both are very, both plays have a lot of merit, honestly. The Shredder is better against the Wrath. All right, I yeah, like that. And also better against the opponent Darnassus Aspirant as well. It's a very an easy good pick off, yeah. which is normally what Hopform wanted to do here. So that's, again, a really unfortunate circumstance for Hopform because he wanted to get uh, consistent ramp. Their Nasus Aspirant is only guaranteed halfway. Once it enters the battlefield, it gives you a crystal, but once it leaves, it takes one with it. Yeah, he knows that if he develops that minion right now, it's just gonna get killed off by Piloted Shredder, and instead he's gonna hold off on playing Aspirant, try to drop it behind the taunt of a Druid of the Claw, and because he needs that ramp to stick. His hand is very clunky, he needs that mana crystal. That's right, so Druid of the Claw coming down here. That second Darnassus Aspirant gives him an opportunity to fill out the rest Where of the mana curve. Absolutely. It's actually fantastic for turn four. Yeah. That was a play also um, to make sure that his opponent can't just Savage Roar and easily clear off the board if the opponent didn't have anything. So Hotform dialing in, and he's going to be playing the recovery game from this point on. Wow. Kuno pushes for damage there rather than trading, expecting Darnassus Aspirant maybe just to die to a spell anyway. Uh, which it definitely could have this turn with that Wrath picked up by Hotform. But both players respecting the... Well, Kuno really respecting the value of damage in the Druid Mirror. Whoa! That is a Darnassus Aspirin coming out, and he doesn't gain that mana crystal. He loses it. No, he, he definitely, uh, definitely gets wrecked here. That is <laughs> not what you want to see. That's such a big deal, too, because that's one less mana crystal for Kuno to have the ability to drop. Dr. Boom in the following turns. On turn four, we just saw five Darnassus Aspirants within the <laughs> game. With potential for more. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right, now, so Keeper of the Grove, it's a minion, as Hype mentioned, that doesn't have the best of stats. So a lot of times later in the game, you don't want to really play it, even if it does have value against some minions like Ancient of War. So Kuno recognizes that. He's just going to play more of a tempo game, develop that Keeper just so he has something on the table, even if the stats aren't wow. impressive. That's such a big deal because now Kuno's once again going to be on four mana. And Hawthorne's going to be hitting turn uh, on seven mana if he can't kill this off this Darnassus Aspirin in time. Oh, that's still a good pickup for Kuno, though. He gets something to play on turn four, which he desperately needed. He's still considering hero powering, though. Turn seven is the most important turn for Druid, so if there's a turn, if there's a mana crystal that you want to stop your opponent from getting, that's right. it's the seven. He has two options. He's got Dr. Boom and Ancient of Lore. Kuno, not happy to see that, but if he sees the opponent pass, he'll know his turn was worth it. Absolutely. So after a fantastic start from Kuno, Hotform has managed to catch up off the back of a very fortunate Shredder, or a not-so-fortunate Shredder from Kuno. This extra mana crystal that he's going to be up the entire game is just such a big deal. Yeah, still not out of the question, can Kuno come back here? In fact, if he hit Innervate, uh, right that turn, it could have been an opportunity for him to swing the game. But now he's just going to be hoping that Hotform doesn't have powerful turn seven plays. But there's some bad news. Hotform has a lot of options this turn on what he wants to do. The thing about Dr. Boom is while it's a great minion on turn seven, it's also you're playing it against Druid, one of the only decks known to play big game hunter. So there's definitely, there's, sometimes there's merit to playing something like an Ancient of Lore instead. But he is going to take the risk, just wants to develop those boom bots. I mean, I like this play too. I, I, would, I, would, uh, I would take the risk. Well, uh, swipe is one way to deal with it. Is there a more efficient way you see hype that maybe we're not looking at right now? Swipe is pretty clean. It takes care of most of the board, but it doesn't let him do anything else with it. So maybe he might be tempted to throw down the Force of Nature while he has the six mana. Oof. Man, yeah, that's a good point. Does he have the guarantee of being able to Oh, it's most of sheep or would be nice here? Yeah, he's thinking of attacking the Shredder first, which opens up the door for things like Explosive Sheep, but if there's a taunt, it might also mess up his attacks. No? All right, that's pretty good uh, boom pot outcomes, relatively speaking. That's definitely what he wanted to see, not too threatening of a minion. And neither player is going to run out of cards this game. They both have access to Ancient of Lore. Hotform has Azure Drake. So really, it's just going oh, to be a man. tempo game. This is not an attrition war at all. It's all about who can get somebody down to 14 life first and have the Force of Nature Savage Roar combo to end the game. Well, Kano's got Dr. Boom himself, finally. He eventually got to that seven mana, but Hotform is ready with Big Game Hunter and even some more juice after that. So if he drops his Dr. Boom, he's going to have to be hoping for some miraculous Boom Bots. That's exactly what Hotform wanted to see. Being able to deal with a seven mana minion in the mirror with for three is just so powerful. It's really about the mana and not the fact that Big Game Hunter is a two for one. It's going to give Hotform initiative, a lot of stuff on the board. It's going to make it very tough for Kuno to recover from this position. All right, sniping off that Echoing Ooze. That Shredder did a lot of work being able to deal that damage and withstand it. Uh, Hotform could also end up developing another minion behind this, like the Pilot Shredder, so that way he has the most resilient board for Savage Roar to end the game. Now you can see Kuno is not happy to see that big game hunter. And the Shredder, this is just the kind yeah. of position that Druid usually... Oh! Oh, wait! Oh, oh my God. God. If... Uh, if he swipes face and hero, if he swipes face and plays shade, isn't does he even have to swipe face? Maybe he can just swipe something to stay alive. Oh, oh. he just ends up blinking. He says, "I don't want to risk losing here. I know I could die to a single savage roar." So he ends up using a force of nature, and that is a very defensive move. That ultimately you have to wonder: Can he still win the game? Yeah, Kuno is very afraid of combo. He had the opportunity to. Oh. <laughs> The icing on the cake for Hot Form. He gets a healer, so that way he makes sure he can't take any more damage to get within combo range. That Ancient of Lore off the top two was equally backbreaking. And Kuno realizes he's back in the same position as he was before. This is a challenge that you guys were bringing up. Even if you are playing defensively, can you be able to recover from position if he just loads up more minions and threatens again? 
thing about Druid and just the way the deck is built is it it never really runs out of threats. When you play defensively, it's just going to put more stuff on the table next turn and end the game. And that's going to be it. Hot Form has the swipe in Savage Roar, keeping the America's dream alive. And he is going to the grand finals. Okay. Yeah, congratulations to Hot Form. Very well played. What a journey for this Canadian player. He ends the run for Asia Pacific. Those games were so insane. Everything from the Tempo Mage versus Midrange Paladin game, yeah. the Druid games, that was... Those are quite some some uh, strong starts to, to overcome from Kuno. Absolutely, and a job well done. You can see the Hot Form celebrating with some of his friends and peers, along with the fans who are cheering him on. Hot Form is your second semifinalist going to the Grand Finals of the Hearthstone World Championship. Rachel is waiting on stage with a few words with our winner. I'm sorry, Dan, did you say I can't hear you over this huge audience and all the enthusiasm for Hot Form moving on to the finals? This is amazing. What does it feel like to stand up here and to know you're moving on to the finals? I mean, it's so humbling, all you guys cheering. That's so amazing. Uh, I still have another match to go, but thank you guys for the support, man. That means a lot to me. A uh hot -huh, form, you talked about the power that you would receive if you were to be our Hearthstone World Championship winner, and this is just a taste of it. What will you do with that power should you win? I already feel like a winner. I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't need to win the next match. You guys are amazing. I feel amazing. It's, it's all great, so I'm just happy to be here. All right, hot form. That was an amazing match. I'm going to let you go because you seem to want to get off the stage. He's going to get ready for our finals match. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are excited. This is going to be incredible. We'll be back very soon. Don't go anywhere. The 2015 World Championship